Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. A shot of entertainment to the head. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. Welcome, everyone, to the Everly Show podcast. I am Everly. Quick shout out to everyone who follows me on Twitter. You can follow me at the Everlord Score Lee, Facebook.com slash the Everett Lee. Click that thumbs up. And of course, Podcast City Network, the official host of the Everett Lee Show. You can check out more content and podcast on podcastcity.net. Well, I'm back again. Two podcasts back to back in a row. I hope everyone enjoyed last night's podcast I did right here on Twitch. Dot TV slash Podcast City Network I did with the Chris Rose. It was always a pleasure to have him come on. Today, I'm going to dial it back just a bit. It's been a while since I've had a writer and author on. I actually got two, and it's going to be a first for me because one of my guests is the youngest guest I've ever had on the Everett Lee Show that I'm going to interview today. I want to introduce and welcome to the podcast authors and writers, Mark and Christina Retorto. Did I say that right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you said it correct. All right. <laughs> I'm always bad with names. <laughs> that's all right. You actually did it correct. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's that's awesome. That is awesome. What uh, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, what's uh, what? What's uh, with your last name there? Is that um, nationality? What uh, is that? Italian. Italian. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. That is. And you live you live up in you live up north, don't you? Up around New Jersey, New York. Uh, we're actually located in uh, Bergen County area of New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. My wife's from New Jersey, and I have friends that a couple friends that live up there as well, up in New Jersey. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know where she's from? Yeah, she's from around Hazlitt and Mama Town. I think that's the names right there. Oh, oh I know where Hazlitt is. I grew up near there when yeah. I was younger. I used to live in the Red Bank area of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she. And then I moved to uh, Bergen County uh, when I met met my wife to be. Oh, nice. And I've been up there ever since. Nice. All my, I have, I have five brothers and about four of them at one time, uh, been, have been married to, uh, their wives have been from up North. <laughs> so we're all from Florida and we married, uh, our wives are from, from up North. <laughs> uh, oh, so you're from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Daytona, oh, what part of Florida? Daytona beach. Ah, oh, okay. I've never been there. I was supposed to go there on, uh, my college spring break one year, but I never got to go. But I go to uh, Boca Raton a lot. Okay. Yeah, I, kn- yeah. I don't know about where that college is. Friend. Yeah. So we visit them all the time. Yeah, Day- Daytona. Daytona is pretty good. It's a good tourist town. It has a lot of, a lot of like with race with the races with the NASCAR with the Daytona 500, and then uh, twice a year they in March they do Bike Week. Everyone comes down for a week there and down in downtown Daytona on Main Street to do Bike Week, and then they do in uh, October they do uh, Biketoberfest, which is about four days, and it's it's great. I mean just big big tourist town and it keeps growing every day pretty soon it's gonna probably be big as orlando orlando is just crazy <laughs> oh yeah 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 we go to orlando quite often too yeah disney world oh yeah like christina you like disney world christine yeah you do <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome my wife loves it too and i can't wait to take my two-year-old when she gets a little bit older to uh to disney you gotta wait till a little older so they remember it. Yeah, 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 definitely. And speaking of kids, you you're a father of four, right? Yes, I have. I'm the proud father of four daughters. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You're outnumbered, aren't you? <laughs> oh yes. 
<laughs> that's the, I, I'm outnumbered here two to one. <laughs> I feel for you, man. <laughs> I have one one daughter, and uh, she's a handful. She is a handful, but four. Wow, my hats off to you, man. My hats off to you. Yeah. <laughs> and and speaking of speaking of family, pretty much your family has is a writer of families, right? Yes, yes. And it started out with uh, Christina writing first. Um, she published her first book when she was ten years old. Wow. Uh, it's called her first book is called "I Am a Survivor," and then uh, shortly after that. Uh, Probably like six months later after that one, she published her second book, which is called Invisible Girl. Oh. And uh, my second oldest daughter, Julia, is in the process of finishing up her first book. Um, hopefully it'll be done by August. You know, she's very busy. She's like, you know, an honor society. and she's uh, She tries to focus a lot on her schoolwork, so. But uh, she'll eventually get that book done. And then, actually, my youngest daughter, Samantha, who's almost, who just turned nine, she's working on her book, too. Yeah. So it's like like a family bug, so to speak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good, getting getting into writing, because it's it's a good creative process, you know, because you could come up and create the most amazing things and and just stories where you can go. To me, storytelling is like the like the, it's been around forever and people today they they buy books they even get the uh, kindles they get audio or you know the physical copy i i prefer myself the physical copy because i like to sit there and hold it and i'm able to you know flip through it and feel it and stuff but a lot of people prefer the digital the digital format and stuff though but people are reading and that's that's what's great and that's that's awesome that everyone in your family there writes and is creative and and in the arts of doing that being a creative writer now with being a creative writer and being a writer and an author you actually have a book out called the cabal the cabal the saga begins when did you decide that you wanted to pursue that, and how did all that all come about with your with your book right there? How did that come about with publishing well, it and everything? I actually started it um, probably like well over ten years ago, and then I uh, when I only had like my first and second kid, mm -hmm. there I mean, and the life just took over, and I got busy, right, and then Christina. Um, published her book. After we published her book and we went through that process, I'm like, you know what? I want to finish the book that I started. I remember I, I started a book and I actually still had the uh, the Word document on my computer. And then I decided to pursue it. And um, what was interesting was when I started the book, it was originally supposed to be just themed uh, around around the martial arts. Mm -hmm. Um. um People who know me, they know I'm a passionate about the martial arts. I've been in the martial arts on and off since I was like 14 years old. Right. Um, but when I approached it again 10 years later, it was kind of like a different meaning for me. Um, I have a friend out there who's got uh, cancer. So I kind of based the book on... It's kind of like... I mean, the story doesn't have anybody with any cancer, but it's kind of like symbolism. Uh-huh. So in the story, um, the main character finds that his best friend um, got murdered, and it just so happens to be his friends happen to be a U.S. senator, and during the course of the investigation, he meets people um, that will forever change his life, and then they all find out that their lives were somehow impacted by a secret um, society that's that, that their goal, main goal, is to take over the world. Right. And they discover that the same organization not only influenced somehow, somehow their impact of their lives, but also took someone away from them that they loved. Um, and then they find out that the same terrorist organization not only murdered this guy's friend, but was also planning a terrorist attack. 
Wow. So the plot is that they end up stopping him. Um, and there is a, there is a surprise twist in the end. The book the book is designed to have each character stand on its own on its own merits to spawn off different series. Huh. Um, that's that that was the approach I took to it. So like I said at the time I was um, I had some emotions with my friend. Right. And I just put it all in the book. <clears throat> wow. That's that's neat. I I like the story. It it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me of uh, something from like a Jason Bourne type movie with the with the conspiracy and the espionage and there's more behind everything that's going on. That's that sounds that sounds really interesting, man. I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pick that up and actually actually read that. That's yeah, yeah. that's that's cool. I like that. I like that. Now. Are you you planning on writing any other books, or you plan on writing more? You plan on writing more with that and do it as a series, as you said, right? Yes. Um, basically, like we first put it out in Kindle format, then we put it out in a paper book. We put it out in um, audio book format about a couple months ago, mm-hmm. and I just started writing a different type of novel. Um, it's a, a vampire, a fantasy series, but I do plan to go back and write another story on the Cabal. Um, but it's a little harder for me because I work full time. You know, I got the podcast and four kids. Right. <laughs> a little, it's a little hard. So my time is kind of limited. Yeah. And I know I do know there's a lot of people out there that have read the book and they're looking for the sequel. Um, they're actually looking, one person actually commented on uh, Amazon that they're actually looking for an origin story on one of the characters. So I, I may, I might do that first or I might do a, t- a continuation of, right. of where I left off in this book. But I definitely plan to do that. I'm also um, trying to see if I can turn it into some kind of movie. But I know it's a difficult process. I've met some, some screenwriters and it's very a long, it's a long and complicated process. So I don't know if, if I'm going to end up doing it myself or I'm going to hire someone. Right. But uh, I figured first, let me finish the book that I'm currently working on, and then I'll go back and at least finish the sequel. Mm-hmm. The Cabal, because currently the book I'm writing now again it's like it's like a vampire uh, fantasies novel, right. but I'm doing it as a series. So I'm I'm writing one big book, but I'm splitting it up into three different parts. Okay. Um, you know, and then each part will probably be distributed probably like four to six months in advance. Uh, I mean, four to six months apart. This way there's not that much uh, wait time between the books. Uh-huh. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm just taking it taking it from there. Uh, it, is, it is a creative process, and it's not something um, you can rush. Every, right. You get to ask questions. My daughter, she can attest to it, even though she's got more time on her hands. It's... <laughs> It's not something you can spit out. Like you think you come up with the great idea, yeah, and then you try to put it on paper, but then you try to fill out the pages with more details to make the novel even more interesting, and it's not that easy. Right. <laughs> it it's not I have great ideas, and I can come up with like a, a backbone outline to the story, mm-hmm. but going into details is is what I find the most difficult and the most challenging. Yeah, it's fun. It is. It is. Now, did you did you self publish this yourself, or did you uh, go to a publisher? Uh, we self published all our own books. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a particular reason for that. Um, a lot of a lot of these. I mean, we eventually we have like some offers on the table from other publishers for our next books. Right. Um, we may we may try that out once with one of our next books that are coming out, uh-huh. but usually the profit splits are you know not so great if you go with a traditional publisher, and they say they supposedly market your book on your behalf. But I don't know how much of an interest they would have. Yes, it's not like we're you know Stephen King, right, <laughs> or you know James Patterson. Or they'll flood the the TV networks with ads on our books. 
<laughs> so, um, whereas, you know, so it, it, if I do know that they, they do try to help with the marketing, but I'm not too sure how much of the marketing you would help with. Right. And, and there's a lot of publishing companies that are like, all right, if you, you can keep 100% of the profits, but you have to buy a, uh, a package from them, you know, like, right. you know, marketing package or next amount of books. So we decided to go with the self-publishing route with uh, Barnes and Noble on Amazon because it was a little, it's obviously free mm -hmm. and you have a little bit more control and you, you pretty much get around the same profit, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. And you go with Amazon. I don't know if anybody's listening to this and they're um, thinking of writing a book. If they go with Amazon exclusively with Amazon, you can enroll your book in the Kindle Select program. So that means you make money not only when buy, someone buys your book, you also get paid when someone reads your book. So it's kind of like a library. People check in your books and they return them, you know, mm -hmm. whenever they want. Yeah. If you're, uh, I think you pay $10 a month and you can get like 20 books a month. You, 20, actually, if you read 20 books in a week and return them, you get another 20 back. Wow. If you're a member of uh, Prime, I think, and you pay the, the Prime membership, I think you get like 10 bucks. Not but, bad. Uh, yeah, and you, but it's a limited per month or whatever. But it's a good deal. It is. I mean, it's obviously lucrative being an author, but it does help. Um, you know, it's fun to do, and my daughter loves it. Right, Christina? Yeah. She loves to write, and, you know, I, I support her. Uh -huh. I, I, it's very interesting that someone at her young age is so interested and focused on creating stories. Yes. So. That is that's that is good. That is, I one point a few years ago I, I came up with like a sh really short story and uh, not like a novel but a uh, the novelette, and I ended up getting that published. I went through Amazon uh, the publishing through Amazon there for uh, self publishing and it was cool. I got the I got to create the the cover and the back cover and all that there. And I believe that's that's the way to go. A lot of authors and writers are doing it nowadays instead of hitting up publishers. And being a self publisher, I've I've had on my show plenty of times. I've had in the past. I had uh, one author named Jack Flacco. He published three books off of, for Amazon, and all three of them he self published, and they were like in the top ten. And that's just that's just a way to go, and and just doing it that way. But it's it wouldn't hurt, you know, like you said, to try a publisher out and just for for one book to see how that goes too. And that's that's pretty that's pretty neat there. And yeah. you you said Barnes and Noble. I read something today that Barnes and Noble got bought out. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah, yeah. This uh, one this one company went ahead and bought Barnes & Noble out for, I think it was $475.8 million. They bought them out, and uh, I didn't read more into the story, though, but uh, I thought that was interesting. I'm like, wow, they got bought out. <laughs> that's just that's just crazy. <laughs> it is. It is, but, I mean, Amazon, Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble, and self publishing is not bad. And like you said, yeah, anyone anyone want to publish a book, I mean, try that, do that, you know. And, you know, or if you want a publisher, you know, try that too. But now with writing books and publishing books, um, you said there is uh, other family members that are gonna be publishing books. Um, do they do, are they gonna plan on writing like a series or just uh one one books here or there different different stories mm, i don't know what julia's plans are mm -hmm. yeah, I think she's doing a series oh okay and American author. yes the youngest one is planning to do a series too <laughs> i guess they, they put ahead <laughs> 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 that is that is wow. neat. <laughs> oh, kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is neat. That is neat. I want to ask Christina a few questions. 
I want to I want to ask uh, ask you, Christina, about your first book that you wrote. I am a survivor. Can you tell me what that was about? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, um, I the idea was like like so basically, um, like they like this girl and like you know she has cancer, and so basically everyone like. You know, she gets, like, bullied for having cancer and stuff at, like, her school. And, like, she feels like she misses out on, like, a lot of stuff. But, like, she learned how to fight through it. And, like, she learned how to stay strong even when, like, sometimes things hurt, like, physically or, like, you know, emotionally. And so, basically, yeah. <laughs> wow, that is, that's nice. That's, that's a neat story. Right there, and your other book, your second book, you wrote, Invisible Girl. What what is that about? So there's this girl who's named Elizabeth. Uh, in a story, she likes to be called Lizzie. So um, basically, uh, so Lizzie, she's like, she's really quiet. She gets scared whenever she has to talk, and so basically. Because of that, she's always been, like, ignored, like, and there's, like, really no one she could go to because her father is always working, always busy, never home, and she never knew about her mother. So, um, basically, uh, she feels like she's alone, sort of, but, like, she finds out more about her mother through, like, these, like, sort of, like, visions. And when she learns about her mother, she finds, that, like, they're going to help her find her mother. So when she finds her mother, she learns, she learns a lot about her mother. She learns about herself and a little bit about her father and her other family members. And she learns about, like, what it really is to be, like, have a friend and so basically, you know, she got, a li- she got a little bit more brave. She started talking more. And she she, met, she meets these two friends who help her with, like, stuff. And oh. so basically, yeah. <laughs> nice. How, how did you come up with the ideas for, for your books? And how did you take the experiences or other experiences to write, write both your books? Because, like, my dad came to me. He was like, hi, yeah, I know you like to write. So I found out about this Amazon thing where you could self-publish. Do you want to write a book? I'm like, yes. Yeah. And he's like, okay, but you, you, need, you know you need to have ideas. I'm like, yeah. So I was trying to, like, find out ideas, but I didn't really have any. So I, I went to, like, my friends. And one of them came out with the idea of having a girl with cancer. And so then that idea creates... Um, I'm a survivor, and then the second book, Invisible Girl, um, based on, like, you know, so I feel like all me and my sisters, we're not exactly, like, really loud in school, so, like, I feel like a lot of me and, like, especially my older sister, we can kind of sort of, like, relate to that because, you know, we're quiet, we're not really noticed, but, like, I don't want to. And I know there's a lot of shy people. Some of my friends are really shy. But, like, I don't want them to think that, like, there's no hope. So I created an invisible girl, you know, for, like, people who might have been quiet to, you know, think that, like, it's all in your head. It'll be fine. You just sort of need to be brave. Right. And things like that. I like it. I like it. I, I myself, in high school, I was pretty quiet. I didn't say much. I kept to myself i i did have friends and acquaintances in school and i wasn't too loud until my senior year in high school at the talent show and then that's when i let loose <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and everyone said to me at that lat towards after the talent show they said for four years you didn't say nothing and then finally you just decide to speak <laughs> 
What you do is you're on a talent show. Oh, me and me and my friends, we we got together and um, we played Black Sabbath, Electric Funeral, with no drums, two guitars, a bass. I played bass, and my two other friends played guitar, and then other friend sang. And huh. yeah, okay. yeah, I played a guitar myself too. Yeah, Michael, but you know, I tried. <laughs> I I did. I when I was eighteen, I thought that that was that was basically gonna be be my world. I'm gonna be like this big rock star, and I'm gonna go travel the world and stuff. And I did, I only made it as far as the garage, and that was about it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you yeah. had fun, right? Yeah, I, I I had fun. I had fun, and throughout the years, I would I jam every once in a while and stuff. My my nephew, he plays. He plays drums. He's been he's he's about thirty, and he was playing drums since he was eight. My brother always played guitar, and then I I played guitar. I, I played bass and drums, and didn't do good singing. It was more when I was a teenager. It was more into punk music and just just that <laughs> type type music because three three chord music. I mean that you can't go wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Green Day, Misfits. I mean, that was just pretty, pretty much, you know, pretty much it. Rancid, just the old, old punk, you know, stuff from like the '80s and '70s. But I mean, we did like the old stuff, like Black Sabbath, and uh, we liked the Seattle music, like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana which I, I grew up on in the 90s as a teenager, so. <laughs> but. Yeah, you listen pretty much to the same music. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm i I'm 40, and it it's funny, I, I turn on, I turn on, like, I, I have the Sirius XM, and I turn it on, like, the lithium station, listen to the 90s stuff, my wife's in the car with me, she rolls her eyes, she's like, all we listen to is the 90s. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I, you know, so I switched over to the classic rock channel, the classic rewind, and listened to some, you know, good, good old stuff there, like old Sammy Hagar and Police, and uh, you know, different, different types, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, <laughs> but I, I was, I was quiet, and then senior year I broke out, but I, I do like the, the stories behind. Your books there, Christina. That's really that's really amazing and really good. What does what does your fr- uh, friends think about and say about you having two books that's published with, which I saw pot really good positive reviews on Amazon. They like brag about it, like oh. I don't, cause, like usually when I like talk about my books, I sometimes get like embarrassed, and so like they're like, oh yeah, look at Christina. Christina, you're so awesome. You wrote two books. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to respond. I get embarrassed. And like, they're really supportive about. It. They're really supportive about it, though. That's good. That's 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 awesome. With your friends being supportive, and your your dad and your yeah, your sisters being very supportive. That's that is that is awesome. Now, with yeah. you having both books. Christina, does that did that inspire your friends to get pick up more books and start reading and getting into writing? Uh, I mean, my friends and I have always been sort of like bookworms, mm-hmm. but like you know, I um I know um one of my friends uh she I didn't really know that like she liked to write, but into fifth grade I saw like like she was sending me these really really, like, good quotes that she made up herself, I'm like, wow, you're good at this. And she's like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's neat. And you're sending, you're sending a really good message in the books, both books, as you described right there, to yeah. young, to, to young, young readers. Would you, what advice would you give to a young writer starting out, what advice would you give if someone asked you? Uh, with writing, if you want to write a book, I feel like 
you know, it's your book, so you can really do whatever you want with it, and you shouldn't really let anyone's opinions hold you down, because, you know, it's your book, you can do whatever you want with it, and, you sh- and like, you know, you can do whatever you want with it, and, like, be proud, don't really get embarrassed, because it's your work, you did a good thing, you should be proud. <laughs> I like that. That is a good, that, that's a good answer. I like that. Wow. <laughs> that, you took me by surprise there. That's, that is awesome. I like that. I like that advice right there. That is, that is awesome. You're, you're really proud of her, Mark. Yep. <laughs> that, that is, I mean, I would, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of you right there. Just, just, you know, I just talking to you today and just that right there. That's, that is awesome. That is some good advice right there. <laughs> I I like that. I like that. Do do you plan on writing anything else? After, uh, anything planned, Christina? Uh, I don't know how many books you got you're writing now. I'm like working on like four books. And I have like so much ideas. And I'm having trouble like like taking out one idea and keeping the others for later, so I just read them all down. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good i mean you write down your ideas and stuff that's that's great yeah. that's great you're always writing ideas down yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you do the same thing mark when you, you come up with an idea do you have like a notepad like right right there where you come up with an idea and you write it down do you do you do the same thing i actually have a uh app on my phone um it's like a, a memo pad it's called Inkpad, and it syncs like with your Google account. And I just have like a, like an item, like a book ideas, and I just jot down like not so much the whole I, the whole storyline, but uh, an idea of a story. And I have I don't know like five or ten different ideas of books that I like to write on. Uh, but that's not gonna get. I'm gonna focus just on the cabal and. The vampire series first because I want to get those done. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think Christina goes more in depth. Like she's actually writing four different books right now. Wow. <laughs> For like, like one, I think is almost 200 pages right now. Oh, and she's nice. not done. And, uh, whereas me, I, I just I'm just focusing on one book and I just have like my ideas on an app that syncs with my phone, so that when I'm ready to when I'm done with like the cabal, I can go start something else, mm-hmm. you know, but an outline, it's not detailed. She actually, she's got pages and pages. She just hasn't finished them all. Wow. You know, she gets a book, I think she starts typing. She gets up early. Like most <laughs> kids, now, like you, you struggle to get them up for school. Sometimes she gets up early and she starts typing. She gets up early on the weekends, boom, 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 boom. Six o'clock, seven o'clock, she starts typing. Sometimes she's typing before she goes to bed. She's like a machine. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, jeez. Wow. And if she's not doing that, then she's reading. Mm. So, I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> my my best friend. Up in, constructive. Well, so. <laughs> that is, that's neat. That's neat, like a machine, just. Non, <laughs> I like how I describe that. My my best friend up in Tennessee, his his wife, uh, his his uh, he has three three kids, and the two that's still living at home with him. His uh, I think twelve year old, she she'll get up get up early in the morning, and before she goes to school, she'll do yoga, and then go to school, come home, do yoga again, and then sit down over in the corner of the couch there, and then read. And uh, his his wife. She loves reading too, and then they're they're both be sitting there on opposite ends of the couch with a book, just sitting there, just reading, and just going through and just reading different stories. And i I think that's I think that's great that people and young people and kids just reading books. My my daughter too, she's interested in books and stuff, and I read her a story. Right before uh, she goes to bed at night, we pick out different books, and I read her. I read her. I got her Doctor Seuss, Cat in a Hat, and uh, she likes Peppa Pig, and she got a, some books on that, and it's just different different type books. And she'll come up and give us books, and I think that's neat. You know, at at that age there, 
And I tell my wife, I said, she's in the books. We, you know, keep her interested in, you know, books and stuff because reading, reading's great. I had a teacher one time that said, reading, you, you know, if you just pick up a magazine, you pick up anything, newspaper, you read it, you're reading. And that's always good, good to do. It always is. Yep. It always is good to do. It is. Yep. It is. Anything that works for brain, you know, reading or like in your case, playing the bass is good too. Mm-hmm. You know, it is. It's, it's like a muscle. You got to keep working it. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you you definitely do. You definitely do. You you do have to keep working it. And one one thing one thing I want to get into discussing with you mark is mma i i looked yeah. up on uh, your your facebook page there and i've seen that you a lot of a lot of your photos and stuff of you uh as a com, uh, competitor you tell me a little yeah. bit about uh about that uh being a competitor you said karate martial arts um yeah i've, I've always been in the martial arts uh, well, up to recently, I've been injured, but I'll get into that in a second. I've always been in and out of the martial arts since the age of 14. Mm-hmm. Um, I started out with karate. Um, uh, like, you're... He, I, the guy's so popular, even the kids of this generation know. Everybody usually gets into the martial arts because they watch a Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows who Bruce Lee is, I mean. But uh, I actually got into it... I was a big admirer of Bruce Lee. I had Bruce, if you ask any of my friends growing up from high school, I had wall-to-wall Bruce Lee photos all over the place. But the real, re- real way I got into the martial arts was, uh, I think I was like five or six, and um, my father was also is also a martial artist, and he took me to a um, karate school demonstration in uh, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And he trained at a school. Um, the instructor is actually dead now, but his, his name is James George Cofield, and he produced a uh, top-ranked karate fighter by the name of Tom the Puppet. And when I was at that demonstration, I was like, I was blown away, you know, and I'm like, all right, that's what I want to do. <laughs> um, I didn't really get into it till I was like 14, and then what happened was I graduated college, or yeah, when I graduated college, I took um, went back to karate. I was studying at a school, and my instructor was Ray Martin, and they had a. Uh, he was one of the first few people that cross trained. Like he he didn't teach traditional karate. He he was kind of like Bruce Lee in the fact that he believed that you take a little bit from everything, for mm-hmm. any martial art, take what's and use what is effective and dispose of whatever is not effective. And while I was there, he had a um, jiu-jitsu instructor. It was a young kid. He was a blue belt at the time, but back then there weren't that, that many black belts. So when I was there, I was doing karate and um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And then I really didn't get into jiu-jitsu. I got really into jiu-jitsu like when I was in my late 20s. Right. Um, around the time when I met my wife. And we moved up here, and I found a pure jiu-jitsu school by the name of uh, Performance Jiu-Jitsu. And I trained with them until I uh, separated my shoulder when I was, like, 32. And that took me out for, like, six years. Yeah. It was a really bad injury. I don't know what took me. I just had a hard time finding doctors. And then first it was my shoulder, but the fun thing was my other arm was fine. The one that got hurt was fine. It was the other one. Uh huh. And um, I try to stay active, so I was studying. Um, well, at that time I was doing boxing and jiu-jitsu. Um, I went to a when I was injured, I wanted to keep active, so I, I joined a uh, Muay Thai uh, kickboxing school uh, in Jersey. It's called North Jersey Muay Thai. Uh huh. And on and off for a year, and a I, uh, I met a they had a jiu-jitsu guy over there. And his name was Luis Jaron. He was a brown belt at the time. And I stayed with him for a few years. And then I went over, uh, probably a year after I got my brown belt, I went over to a uh, Henzo Gracie school uh, in Northvale, Northvale, Jersey, 
called Northern Valley Hendo Gracie Jiu Jitsu Academy. Right. Uh, the professor's name in there is Carl Mossaro. Uh, he's trained, he's done like I think eight, eight or ten camps with George St. Pierre. If anybody follows him in May, he's a former uh, welterweight. Yeah. Uh, he champion. So, in fact, he's he's in that video footage of uh, the last fight he had. I guess the Count Bing's thing during a training camp. He's the uh, my instructor's the guy that he's doing the takedowns with. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and then what happened was I've, I've always had like you always get bruised and injuries, but what happened was I had like a very I have arthritis in my foot right now. Uh-huh. I have no cartilage in my foot, and I have problems with my IT band. So I haven't I haven't trained. I, I got injured in October last year. My thumb went all the way back. But the thumb was fine. I would have kept training with the thumb. It was just the foot and the legs. I just had a lot of problems. And I tried going back two months later in January. My body was shot. I'm hoping I can get back into it in September. That's what my goal is because it would have been like eight months. I'm like going nuts right now. Yeah, <laughs> my kids are like, how how obsessed I, I was with it, yeah. you know, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, the, the world's at an end. I don't care. I gotta go to jiu <laughs> That was like my mentality. <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't care. I, you know, the only thing that was more important to me than training was my kids. Right. You know, I, <laughs> I would always put jujitsu ahead of it. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, so. During my time in doing jiu-jitsu, I did a lot of jiu-jitsu tournaments. I did the uh, IBGF New York Open. I did the Abu Dhabi uh, Pro Jiu-Jitsu Trials. Uh, I've done the Naga World Championships. Um, Rappler's Quest back in the day. Uh, they don't exist anymore, but back in the day, they were a pretty popular uh, grappling organization. Right, uh, right. And I've trained, you know... Not with a lot of MMA fighters, but, you know, being involved with jiu-jitsu, it's, it's kind of, MMA is kind of, I guess you would say, like the cousin of it, because a lot of MMA fighters do jiu-jitsu, so. Right, right. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, like when I was training at my one school, that's kind of how I got my uh, my name, Mark the Shark, it was from an MMA fighter, an amateur MMA fighter. They kind of coined it. Nice. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. You know, I love it. I still I miss it. I follow MMA as much as possible. And you also follow, uh, I mean, I've kind of been slacking on the jiu-jitsu circuit because it kind of gets me depressed because I can't do it. Yeah. But a uh, high regard for the uh, jiu-jitsu athletes, you know, um, and the, the legends like Marcelo Garcia, Enzo Gracie, uh, Lovato, Roberto Lovato Jr., Cyborg, um, you know, even the new guys like Gary Tonin, Gordon Ryan and his brother Nicky, um, you know, John Danaher, and that whole death squad. I mean, I think what they've done, they just totally revolutionized the sport. And right. In terms of MMA, you know, I give those guys credit. I don't. I still don't think they get paid enough to do what they do. Mm-hmm. I mean, they bodies through hell <laughs> I mean I put my body through hell and I you know I'm not I'm not getting like leg kicked and then going back home and then doing hours of wrestling and then going back in the ring and then doing boxing and then after that doing rounds and rounds of cardio and lifting all on the same day and then you got guys you know in other sports making millions yeah but you know it's all based on the viewership it's because more people I mean as popular as the more mixed martial arts has gotten there are some people that still don't know what don't know what it is. Right. Yeah. Right. So I take it I've always taken it upon myself to kinda of like educate people. Um, back in the day they always thought of it as a uh, two humans cockfighting. Mm-hmm. And I always found that as an insult because they're not cockfighting. They're actually using their intelligence to train their bodies to hone their skills to be able to impose their will on their individual opponent. You know, it's not two guys just throwing haymakers. Mm-hmm. They're doing, you know, they're using their mind and their training to make an educated, calculated guesses on what moves and techniques they're going to use. Right. Obviously, they train their, to the point where it's 
reflex. They don't have to think about it. But, you know, it's not easy. Think no. of it as like a musician. Just you learning the guitar. Like you said, you played like two chord songs. Yeah. Right? And try to yeah. think of like someone like Eddie Van Halen, right? <laughs> or anything Mountain or yeah. George Lynch. Like, think of what they could do with the guitar, right? Oh, yeah. They put the life into it. The same thing with these guys. Yeah. But they're not they're not getting paid the same as, let's say, someone like playing basketball or baseball. Exa- exactly. Yeah. Based Ex- on demand, I understand that. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, ho- I'm hoping it catches up. Yeah, I I mean it's it it's popular. I mean, look look at UFC. Look how look how long they were around, and look how long it took them to get to get to where they were oh, at and stuff. I know. I mean, back in the, I mean, they were outlawed. Yeah, banned from the U.S. You had. I used to go to my friend's house. We used to get like a I don't know. They call them black boxes. Yeah, which you kind of like illegal shows illegally. <laughs> That's how we would watch it. Yeah, you know, we're talking. 93 97 wow yeah. i remember the yeah. black boxes man wow i haven't heard i haven't heard i haven't heard that term forever man black box i was like as soon as you said that i'm like oh my goodness they usually man. associate that with airplanes nowadays but yeah that's what we <laughs> you, back then. You, but it was you, house and we were watching the uc he would get he would have a black box and somehow it was programmed to get channels from different countries or whatever and we watched the uh, UFC Exchange, Extreme Cage Fighting, uh, World Fighting Series, or whatever that one was, the Henzo Gracie one. Um, book and Shoot, I used to get all the videotapes, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we would, they weren't easy. It's not like nowadays it's a little easier. Everything's like streams, you got to take out on ESPN. But it yeah. took the UFC a long time. It did, you it know? did. Um, it... As much as like Dana... Um, you know, a lot of fighters may hate him. They think he's kind of like, you know, he takes advantage of the fighters. But you, in some ways, you got to give him credit. Right. Because he, if he did not have the connections he had to the Fertitta brothers and have have that connection and it put together with his outlook on the sport, it would have never grown the way it is now. It wouldn't be on ESPN. Exactly. Exactly. Or Fox, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I I totally agree right there, man. I mean, he he built it, and it 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 took it a while, and it's you know it it's hot, it's still hot, and I mean, there's so many fighters coming through and stuff and everything, and it's it it's great, it it is it is great, and I did listen listen to your podcast there. You you just you just started it not too uh, not too long ago, did you? How how did you come up? And you decide, I want to. I want to do a podcast. I want to talk about MMA. How how did that come about? Well, like remember when I said I got injured? Yeah. And I go going oh, nuts. Well, it <laughs> <laughs> has to take my mind off the fact that I'm kind of not doing jujitsu anymore. So I poured my energies into different avenues. Uh, uh-huh doing more music now, I'm playing guitar, I actually started taking piano lessons, but the other um, project I started was um, the podcast. Mm -hmm. I figured, let me start, I I, I thought about it, like maybe a few years ago, Uh, but I'm like, you know what, Let let me focus my energies on this, I can still, even though I'm not training, I can still be involved. Somehow, with the martial arts community, right? Uh, you know, I, I help out. I still have my jujitsu roots. I help out um, local jujitsu schools. There was a uh, not too long ago. There was a there's a, a jujitsu school. I think it's in Mawa, New Jersey. They had a, ch- a charity role for uh, brain cancer. Right. So I helped them out last minute by I I just saw like a Facebook entry and I'm like, hey, you know, let me just help promote your. Uh, your cause there, you know. So I figure, like, even though I'm not on a mat rolling, I'm helping other martial artists, particularly those in the MMA and Jiu-Jitsu world, right? Uh, promote themselves. I also promote um, talk with a lot of health and fitness experts, um, just to help other. Like, if there's an MMA listener listening to the show, they can find um, other ways of keeping their body healthy. 
Uh, I had I have a head interview like a sports psychologist, and he talks about how to deal with like a jump adrenaline rushes, and uh, the adrenaline dump that competitors deal with, and like how to deal with the fear and anxiety that you get before you get into a fight. I've interviewed uh, diet experts um, to learn about you know how to diet healthy. Um, I also interviewed interviewed a lot of local MMA fighters. Um, there, you know, a- actually, I um, interviewed recently a, um, a, a fighter. Well, he doesn't fight anymore. He he, he fought on Bellator and Adam Meredith. Um, and um, very interesting character. So I, I I like it. I still keep my somewhat involved with the martial arts. Right. Um, involved in promoting mixed martial arts as a sport, and I, le- I help promote the the fighters. Right. Yeah. It, it it's the, good. Because they don't get a lot of help, you know, help them promote their fights. So, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. And, and also, you get to, uh, when having a podcast, you get to talk about something you're passionate about that you love and love enjoying. And you get to throw a plug in there for for your books and uh, yep. your, your daughter's books, which is great too, which is really great too. And speaking of speaking of uh, your book and uh, Christina's book, where can people find your books at? Um, where, where can they find your book at? And where can they find Christina's books at? Okay. I mean, obviously it's on uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble.com, but to make things simpler, they can just go to our website, which is www.retortofamilybooks.com. That's R-I-T-O-R-T-O, familybooks.com. And right from there, you, there will be direct links from our website um, to the Amazon pages to buy the books. Now, we do have hardcover copies of our books that you can only purchase from our website. Um, and uh, also, we have links to Christina's brand-new audio book for I Am a Survivor. That's on there, and for my audio book version of my book called The Cabal of the Saga Begins. And we're also on Facebook. You can look for Family Book, uh, Retorto Family Books on Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. You can look for my name, Mark Retorto. Uh, we're also, we also have our blog, which is right off our website. You can find out more information. And, uh, Mark Retorto on Twitter. And uh, Instagram, but the best place is obviously our website, RetortoFamilyBooks.com. They can go right from there, and I'll take them to wherever they want to buy it. If they want to buy it from Barnes and Noble or Amazon, and that's the simplest and most effective way. And if they want to buy our hardcover books, there's a link there as well. We also sell swag on our website. There's a link there if they click on the shop link. They can buy hoodies and T-shirts and hats. Um, Based on the novels of our book, you know, there's like the Cabal mug, the Cabal hoodie, the uh, Invisible Girl baseball cap, as well as the generic uh, Retorto family T-shirts uh, for men and crop shirts for women. So, oh, you got it right there. <laughs> you scroll. <laughs> yeah, I I got a screenshot right here. I've been screenshotting yeah. it right here. I'm on your shop right here, and then yeah. right here I got your your website right here. I hear. No one's the book, but if they go to the one, if they click on the shop one, I'll take them to a different place page for where we sell our uh, T-shirts and stuff. But yeah. for the books, that's that's basically it. you just click on the books link, and there you go. Yeah, you can scroll down right there. At the top is Invisible Girl. You could buy it shows right here. You buy on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and you can buy the hard hardcover version. And like you said. Um, a visible girl, same thing. Buy it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and you can buy the audio version. And the Cabal, the saga begins. You buy audio version or book, or Amazon, or from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and then you can buy the hardcover version right here. And you get the links at the bottom right there, as mentioned to uh, your socials, your Facebook page right here. I'm pulling up and. When it loads, <laughs> that's what happens when you have tabs open and stuff, and you get streaming software all on at the same time. Right here, 
<laughs> there it is. There's there's your Facebook page right there, Mark J. Rotato. Right yeah. there. And uh you go back, you got your Twitter as you mentioned, and that's neat right there. I like the website. It's easy to navigate. Definitely navigate. Hey, look, there's a tweet on the Everett Lee show. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I, I shouted that out. Yeah. I saw your posting today. Oh, thank I you. Like your thank artwork you. was pretty good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I do pretty, I, do, I mean, I do, you know, pretty good, but, um, Chris, Chris Carnage, he, he's, he's like the master of Photoshop. He's come up with a lot of stuff and a lot of, uh, a lot of artwork and stuff for us on, uh, for for a lot of the logo logoing and stuff it's kind of 50 Web, 50 I like the website the website was really good oh thank you thank you yeah yeah chris pretty much uh touches up the website here and there with a lot of things and he he pretty much takes care of that part and i mean it's just it's two-man operation what we do and stuff and uh it's quite a bit i mean it's takes a lot to run a network and we're what mark's referring to is podcast city network which uh you can check out right here on the on the page right here podcastcity.net head over there for podcasts such as the everett lee show and many many more content and podcast on the website you can follow podcast c network on facebook podcast c network give that a thumbs up and a like and send us a tweet at podcast city net on twitter and follow the youtube channel podcast city network subscribe to that and right here on twitch.tv slash podcast c network be sure to follow that as well and be sure to follow everett lee show right here on twitch.tv slash podcasting network for live podcast and you can listen to the audio version on podbeam.com Everett Lee Show and on Apple Podcast iTunes Everett Lee Show Stitcher Radio same thing with the with the podcast the audio version and YouTube channel for the audio version of the Everett Lee Show and then Instagram Everett Lee Show and on Twitter at the Everett Laura Score Lee and Facebook the Everett Lee Show and anything else you want to promote and mention Mark before we close and Christina uh, just, just, just be on the lookout for Christina's new audio book hopefully we just approved it we're just waiting for Amazon to finally approve it that should be available hopefully within a couple weeks the, uh, the audio book version and then uh, my podcast, Mark the Shark MMA Show, um, that's on pretty much everywhere, Radio Public, iTunes, Anchor, Stitcher, you, um, you name it, it's on there. High Heart Radio. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, awesome. I want to thank both of you for coming on today and discussing with me your books, your podcast, and martial arts, and everything in between. It was great t talking and chatting with both of you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And the show. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're always welcome to come back on anytime to promote any anything else. And uh that's pretty much it for the Every Lee show. And be sure to tune in next week right here for another episode of the Every Lee Show. Every Lee signing off. Have a great day and a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Yeah.